This is the tale of two bad mice by Beatrix Potter. This talking book was created using Ability Tools by James Holgate. First published in 1904, text is in the public domain in Canada. This is an adaptation for the blind. For W. M. L. W. The little girl who had the doll's house. Once upon a time there was a very beautiful doll's house. It was red brick with white windows, and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. At least it belonged to Lucinda, but she never ordered meals. Jane was the cook, but she never did any cooking, because the dinner had been bought ready-made, in a box full of shavings. There were two red lobsters, and a ham, a fish, a pudding, and some pears and oranges they would not come off the plates, but they were extremely beautiful. One morning Lucinda and Jane had gone out for a drive in the doll's perambulator. There was no one in the nursery, and it was very quiet. Presently there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace, where there was a hole under the skirting board Tom Thumb put out his head for a moment, and then popped it in again Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute afterwards Hunka Munka, his wife, put her head out, too, and when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the oil cloth under the coal box. The doll's house stood at the other side of the fireplace. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went cautiously across the hearthrug. They pushed the front door. It was not fast. Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were tin spoons, and lead knives and forks and two Dali chairs, also convenient. Tom Thumb set to work at once to carve the ham. It was a beautiful shiny yellow, streaked with red. The knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. It is not boiled enough. It is hard. You have a try, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka stood up in her chair, and chopped at the ham with another lead knife. It's as hard as the hams at the cheesemongers, said Hunka Munka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk, and rolled under the table let it alone, said Tom Thumb, give me some fish, Hunka Munka. Hunka Munka tried every tin spoon in turn, the fish was glued to the dish then Tom Thumb lost his temper, he put the ham in the middle of the floor, and hit it with the tongs and with the shovel, bang, bang, smash, smash the ham flew all into pieces, for underneath the shiny paint it was made of nothing but plaster. Then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunka Munka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears, and the oranges as the fish would not come off the plate. They put it into the red-hot crinkly paper fire in the kitchen, but it would not burn either. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out at the top. There was no sort. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunka Munka had another disappointment. She found some tiny canisters upon the dresser, labelled rice, coffee sago, but when she turned them upside down there was nothing inside except red and blue beads. Then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom, and he threw them out of the top floor window but Hunka Munka had a frugal mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's bolster, she remembered that she herself was in want of a feather bed. With Tom Thumb's assistance she carried the bolster downstairs and across the hearthrug. It was difficult to squeeze the bolster into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. Then Hunka Munka went back and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a birdcage, and several small odds and ends. The bookcase and the birdcage refused to go into the mouse hole. Hunka Munka left them behind the coal box, and went to fetch a cradle. Hunka Munka was just returning with another chair, when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole, and the dolls came into the nursery. What a sight met the eyes of Jane and Lucinda. Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared, and Jane leaned against the kitchen dresser and smiled, but neither of them made any remark. 
The bookcase and the birdcage were rescued from under the coal box, but Hunka Munka has got the cradle and some of Lucinda's clothes. She also has some useful pots and pans, and several other things. The little girl at the doll's house belonged to said, I will get a doll dressed like a policeman. But the nurse said, I will set a mouse trap. So that is the story of the two bad mice, but they were not so very, very naughty after all, because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke he found a crooked sixpence under the hearth rug, and upon Christmas Eve Yan Hunka Munka stuffed it into one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. And very early every morning, before anybody is awake Hunka Munka comes with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dolly's house, the end.